Hello everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to sketch this one point perspective busy street scene. If this sketch looks familiar, it's because I colored this sketch in the limited color palette video a few weeks ago. If you want to challenge yourself by sketching this scene, you can download the reference photo from the video description below. By the way, this time-lapse video was created from the full-length tutorial that I have made for my patrons. So if you want to check out the full-length tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link to my Patreon page is in the video description below. So usually for a complicated or complex scene, I sometimes may start with a pencil just to block out the composition first, just to divide the scene into different areas so that I can fit all the buildings onto the page. If I don't mark out the composition, um, if I go straight with ink, sometimes I may draw certain things bigger than what I want or what I prefer. And because the first thing that I draw is big, subsequent elements that I draw will become bigger and bigger and I may actually run out of space later on. So sometimes for very complex scenes, I may use pencils first. The pen that I'm using is a fountain pen with Fude nib which is basically a nib with a bent tip that is capable of drawing thin and thick lines depending on how you hold a pen. And the ink I'm using is Sketch Ink, which is waterproof when dry. So when it comes to drawing a one-point perspective scene, it is important to find out where's the vanishing point because the vanishing point can help you draw more accurately. So for a scene like this, I would typically place a dot to represent the vanishing point and when I draw the diagonal perspective lines, I would draw those lines to the vanishing point. The alternative is to draw those diagonal lines based on observation, which you certainly can, but you have to measure those angles to make sure that you get those angles right. If you have the vanishing point placed on the pitch, you can just draw those diagonal lines to the vanishing point. You don't have to measure those angles all the time. So this saves you a lot of time and it also makes you draw more accurately. So for this um, part that you see here, um, I'm actually drawing from the left to the right side. Usually I will start by drawing the biggest element first or the longest line first and I try to draw the big shapes and then I break down the shapes into smaller and smaller shapes um, just by dividing the shapes. So earlier on you saw me draw the van, I drew the big shapes first and then the window on the back which is the other big shapes and then I fill in uh, the other details like the license plates, the lights, the smaller details. So here I'm drawing the diagonal lines are pointing to the vanishing point which is somewhere on the back of the van. Throughout this video you will see me holding the pen as if I'm measuring angles. Uh, I'm actually measuring angles using the pen because I want to make sure that the diagonal lines are straight and they are pointing to the vanishing point. Notice I've drawn the long that very long line that represents the roof of the shop houses. And now I'm subdividing the shop houses on the right into the second floor and the first floor. I'm actually drawing the mid line between the second floor and the first floor. It's good to have pencil lines uh, on the page to help you basically mark out where the important uh, landmarks are because uh, sometimes I mean personally for me when I draw from left to right I have the tendency to draw things wider and wider so when I mark out the scene with pencil first I have to draw within those pencil lines so it prevents me from drawing uh, wider and wider 
So for this particular section, I'm actually drawing the details on the right side. What I'm doing here is actually uh, I'm trying to mark out the boundary on the right side first. I have the roof line and now I'm marking out the boundary on the right side. Later on, I can continue to draw the details within this uh, within the roof line and the right boundary. For the cars that are parked here, um, well, they are in perspective, that's for sure. Now, the base of the wheels, if you take a look at the base of the wheels, which are on the road, the wheels are actually affected by the vanishing point as well. So when you draw those wheels, um, those wheels have to line up in such a way that this imaginary line that the wheels are on, um, that imaginary, sorry, that imaginary line has to go to the vanishing point. The same vanishing point shared by the shop houses on the left and also on the right side. So after you have drawn the big shapes, you can fill in the details within those big shapes very easily. So this is the completed sketch. Now the buildings on the left side are more compressed because um, if you take a look at the reference photo, I was actually standing very close to the buildings on the left side, which allows me to see the buildings on the right side. So depending on where you stand, your viewpoint, your view, your composition may change. But if you are drawing with the help of a reference photo, well, then you are locked to that particular composition of the photo. So right now I'm just adding a little details to the sketch. Sometimes I may not add certain details because I want to paint those details with uh, watercolor later on. So if you take a look at the tall buildings in the background, those are just rectangular blocks. I would paint the details with watercolor, uh, details such as windows. If you want to see how I color this sketch, you can visit the link that I have for you in the video description below. And if you want to learn more about urban sketching, you can watch the many free tutorials I have on my YouTube channel, or you can support me on Patreon to get access to even more videos.